Hello friends and fans of history, my name is Kate and welcome back to It Came From A Blog. On today's Curious and Clean, I have two pungent and interesting stories for you. Let's just say these stories don't stink. Hmm. Then again, here's your warning, today's video will have mention of poop. Actually, there will be a lot of mention of poop, but before you go, stick around, it's worth it. It's really funny and interesting. You're gonna learn and laugh a lot. So, if you've got a strong stomach and a good sense of humor, then this video is for you. Now that we got that crap out of the way, pun intended, if you're new here, welcome. This is another episode of my series, Curious and Clean, a series inspired by my love of cleaning videos and interesting stories. So forget the cheesy background music, we're gonna learn something new together. Whether you're here for cleaning inspiration or you're just a super curious person like me, I'm glad you're here. Now, let's get curious and clean. Our first story today, Mozart's not-so-classical sense of humor. Ah, yes, the sound of class, elegance, and sophistication. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart composed some of the most beautiful and famous classical music of all time. But did you know that Mozart had a potty mouth? If you've seen the movie Amadeus, maybe this doesn't surprise you, but you should know the film is largely exaggerated. Mozart was more of a family man than a wild party animal, but he did have the crude sense of humor of a middle school boy. Toilet humor has an official term, scatology, an interest in or preoccupation with excrement and excretion. I'm sure you can call to mind some off-color fart or poop jokes that you've seen or heard recently. The movie Shrek is full of them, South Park has a character entirely made of poop, and there's a poop emoji, you get the idea. But scatology is not a recent invention. Turns out dirty humor has been a part of humanity for as long as anyone can remember. Even the famous Canterbury Tales written in 1400 contains scatological humor. Now back to Mozart, a big fan of the genre. In a letter to his cousin Marianne, he wrote, Oh, my arse burns like fire. What on earth is the meaning of this? Maybe Muck wants to come out? What a long and melancholic sound. So cute, right? Um, very poetic. Very poetic. Or how about this memorable Mozart quote? I now wish you a good night. Poop in your bed with all your might. Sleep with peace of mind and try to kiss your own behind. You can carve that one into stone. Imagine getting a letter from the famous composer writing, We, by the love of my skin, I poop on your nose so it runs down to your chin. A true poet. Mozart also wrote, Lick mean, lick, you know what? I don't speak German. Let's, let's try this again. Lick me im arsch, a six-voice canon which translates to lick me in the... you get the idea. He even composed a special canon for three voices written in Latin, but was meant to be sung by a very specific, heavily German-accented singer in order to sound like... well, let's just say it was very rude. Some medical experts and researchers theorize that Mozart had Tourette's syndrome, and that's to blame for his naughty streak and outbursts. But what's more likely is that Mozart was just a normal person, a dad, a husband, an artist, a musical genius, and he also had the sense of humor of a teenager. Because of Mozart's association with highbrow, classical aristocracy types, many people are reluctant to accept that he could be so raunchy. But historical figures were real, multidimensional people, and Mozart had a foul mouth, so we just have to learn to deal with that fact. Story number two. Ah, the beautiful Palace of Versailles, one of the most prestigious and famous palaces in the world. About 12 miles west of Paris, France, over 15 million people visit the palace, park, and gardens each year, making it one of the most famous tourist destinations in the world. It represents an age in French history of both France's rise as a fashion and power center, as well as the dramatic and bloody decline of the monarchy. The Palace of Versailles is an opulent former royal residence. It has held sway in the public imagination for years because of its architectural grandeur and political history. 
jaw-dropping architecture is just the tip of the iceberg. It is also full of priceless, stunning artwork. And to the public imagination, Versailles is the epitome of opulence. But that's the palace as we know it today. Let's talk a bit about the palace of yesteryear. France's kings were first attracted to Versailles because of the area's prolific game. Louis XIII, who lived 1601 to 1643, bought up the land, built a chateau, and went on hunting trips here. At the time, much of the land around Versailles was uncultivated, allowing the wild animals there to flourish. The chateau that Louis XIII built was little more than a hunting lodge, having enough space to house the king and a very small entourage. It was his successor, Louis XIV, the Sun King, a ruler who chose the sun as his emblem and believed in centralized government with the king at its center, who would radically transform Versailles, making it the seat of France's government by the time of his death. Louis XIV ruled France for 72 years, and in that time he transformed Versailles by encompassing the old chateau with a palace that contained north and south wings as well as many nearby buildings. Versailles was truly built to impress. A series of gardens created in a formal style stood out to the west of the palace and contained sculptures and pressurized fountains capable of launching water high into the air, an amazing feat at that time. The formality and grandeur of the gardens symbolized Louis XIV's absolute sun king power. Since the Palace of Versailles has been built, the monarchy that has lived here has included a whole slew of Louis because apparently naming is not very complicated when it comes to French aristocracy and royalty, as well as Marie Antoinette and even Napoleon Bonaparte himself. But the lavish palace hid some dark and stinky secrets. While painting of Louis XIV's opulent court of Versailles show royals clad in gorgeously embroidered garments, viewers today are missing one of the main elements of their finery, the odor of hundreds of clothes that have never been washed all in one unventilated room. After all, Louis XIV was only known to have bathed three times in his entire life. It was his choice when he decided to no longer travel from court to court and instead to live in the Palace of Versailles that led to a particularly putrid living situation. In 1682, in an effort to seal his authority, Louis XIV moved his court permanently to Versailles. At that time, over 10,000 royals, aristocrats, government officials, servants, and military officers now lived in Versailles and its surrounding lodges. It was packed. Despite its reputation for magnificence, life at Versailles for the royals and the servants was no cleaner than slum-like conditions in a lot of other cities during this time. Women pulled up their skirts to pee wherever they stood, and men just urinated in the middle of the royal chapel. According to historian Tony Spofforth, author of Versailles, a biography of the palace, Marie Antoinette was once hit by human waste being thrown out the window as she walked through an interior courtyard. People would just defecate in the corners, and the feces were only cleared out every few days. Lots of packed indoor gatherings and no plumbing led to complaints about awful smells inside of the palace as well as outside, because people also used the gardens as a toilet too. The sheer amount of people, along with the squalid filth in which they lived, led to the spread of syphilis, a disease that riddled the nobility of Versailles and plagued the court up until the French Revolution. Smallpox was another terror, and two epidemics swept through Paris during this time. There was no cure, and even if you did survive, you would be left with scars and pockmarks all over your face, or if you were really unlucky, it could blind you. It infiltrated the Palace of Versailles as well and famously killed Louis. Louis the 15th. But it wasn't just disease that affected your body when you lived in Versailles. The lack of hygiene practices meant that many French aristocrats would be infested with lice. If you add this to the fact that you could lose hair with the side effect of syphilis, it is no wonder why many people opted to wear wigs. The squalor of Versailles was not unique to France, and many palaces throughout Europe were just as filthy. But what made Versailles the worst is how huge it was, how much land it took up, and the sheer amount of people that inhabited it. 
Today, the Palace of Versailles is remembered as the home of royalty, aristocracy, and opulence. But now you and I both know the smelly secret hidden behind those beautiful palace walls. Well, friends, those are my two crappy stories for you today. I wanted to thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate you being here. I would love it if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it. Share it if you feel that it is worth sharing. Subscribe and ring the bell if you're looking for more content like this. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time here on It Came From A Vlog. Bye-bye. Thank you.